In Creole Parametric 10.0, you can now create oxetic lattice cell structures for additive manufacturing. Oxetic comes from the Greek word meaning increase, and these are materials or structures that have a negative Poisson's ratio. Normally, when you have an object in tension, it will end up decreasing its cross-section. When you have an object in compression, it will usually increase its cross-section. But with oxetic materials, it's the opposite. A material or structure under tension will increase its cross-section, and an object under compression will decrease its cross-section. Some other terms for oxetic materials are anti-rubber and dilational. Some different products where you can find oxetic materials include sneakers, body armor, bulletproof vests, and medical products, and they're used in tissue engineering. Some different materials include paper, even possibly bone. There's black phosphorus and some polyurethanes, and these materials tend to be low in density. Cork, it turns out, has a zero Poisson's ratio. Anyhow, let's see how to do this in Creo Parametric. I have rambled on way too long. Here I am in Creo Parametric in a part model. To create my lattice structure, I will go to the Engineering Overflow menu and choose the Lattice command. For my lattice region, I'm going to choose to replace the body with a lattice. Since my part model only had one body, it was automatically selected. I'm not going to change the position or orientation of my lattice cell, but let's create a shell structure. I will use the shell structure later on in order to simulate this. Let's change the thickness to 10. I'm going to put it on the outside of my body. And to exclude the surfaces, I'm going to pick the surfaces around the model. I will select two of them directly. And then for the other two, I will use query select to get to them. By the way, I'm holding down the control key in order to select multiple surfaces. Now I will go to the cell type tab and the two new icons are this icon. This is for creating an oxetic cell with two angles. Let me click on it so I can do some thinking about that. The icon to the right, I'll show that later on. This is oxetic with one angle. And I'm going to leave the default values for the cell size. You have a skewing angle if you want this canted at an angle. And then we have an X angle that we can define, and that is the angle for the geometry in the XZ plane. You also have a Y angle since this is an oxetic cell with two angles. This is the beam angle on the YZ plane. If I go to the drop down list, it automatically has some multiples of 15 degrees. So for example, if I go to 30 degrees, it's doing some thinking for the geometry. And you can see how that ends up looking. Let me change this one to 45. You can end up selecting combinations of angles that don't work. Here you can see, wow, that looks really odd. Let me go back to the default of 15 for both. Oops, accidentally clicked 30 for that one. Here, let me show you what it looks like. Let's go back to 15. And once more, let's go to 15 on the Y angle. All right, so that is good for the cell type. Let's go to the cell fill tab. I'm going to choose for dangling beams that I want them to be removed. And let me change the cross section size to a smaller value of 10. And I'm going to change the ball diameter to 25. You can choose to remove the balls entirely by unchecking this box. Right now, the profile type is straight. Let me hit the check mark in order to generate the lattice. Let's give it a few seconds to think. And there you can see what the oxetic cell structure looks like. Let me use the saved views list to show you a front view of it from the front and also from the side. Let me go to my right view. You can see there a little bit more about how the structure looks. But let me go back to sort of like an ISO orientation and just reposition it. All right, let me edit definition to show you some of the other different options. 
I will click on the feature in the model tree, then use the edit definition command from the mini toolbar. Let me click in a cell just so that the excluded surfaces are not selected. Now let's go to the cell fill and I'm going to show you what a beam profile of parabolic looks like. I'll choose that. Let's give it a few seconds to recompute the shape of the geometry. And so there you can see it is a bit more curved. There are two different uh, values that you can enter into different parameters for a parabolic profile. You have the parabolic radius and a profile coefficient. Let me go back to straight. And you can see how the geometry updates. Now that I have this beam configured for the oxetic with two angles, I'm going to hit the check mark and then go into live simulation in order to show you how this ends up being oxetic, how it ends up displaying the negative Poisson ratios behavior. Before I jump in there, let me right click on the top node in the model tree and edit materials. I'll go to the old legacy materials. Yes, we know in Creo 7 they added multi-body, so there's a new default material. Let me choose in this case, I'll just grab the nylon, right click on it, set it as the master, and then click OK. You need to have a material selected in order to perform a simulation. Now I will click on the live simulation tab. It loaded the simulation libraries. And to run a structural simulation, I need to fix a surface. Let me query select to the bottom surface of the part. And oops, did I accidentally choose the, uh, the enforced displacement? Let me choose the fix command. Let me query select to the bottom surface and then click OK. Now that bottom surface is fixed. Let's apply a force in the model. I will apply it to this surface. And based on the little coordinate system in the lower right hand corner, I want to apply it in the positive y direction so that it will be in tension. And normally when you have an object in tension in the middle, it should get thinner. But we'll see what happens. Let's crank up the magnitude of this force to a thousand. Oops, did I get the wrong direction? Accidentally entered x. I am hitting a few wrong buttons today. Let's change the value to one in the y direction. That's good. That's the value of the preview. Let's click the OK button. And now to run the live simulation, I will click on the icon in the in graphics toolbar. And it is now using my graphics processing unit in order to perform the simulation. And now we're starting to get some results. We'll see it refine until it gets to a stable value. And so it looks like right now, based on my conditions, we have about three megapascals. Let me turn off the simulation objects display. And where, we're, where we will get the real value out of looking at this is by animating the deformation. Kind of weird how the graphics just like fly in from the side. To show you the animated deformation, let me go to my front view. And right now you can't really see that it's getting wider, but let's change to the right view. And yes, indeed, based on this structure, as it's in tension, the structure is actually getting wider. Let's change the type of the cell in order to see more of a result. Let me turn off the animation. Let me turn off the live simulation. And let's go back to the model tab. I will select the lattice feature and edit definition. And let me just select in the body field. I'm just doing that so that the side surfaces that I excluded are not highlighted on the screen. Now I will go to the cell type and use the other icon. This one is the oxetic with one angle. And you'll notice that we just have an X angle in this case. The Y angle went away. That's why they call it one angle. And from the cell fill tab, I'm using the same values as before. Let's hit the check mark. And I will let it generate the geometry in real time. 
Now let's go back over to the live simulation tab. This time I'll hit the simulation icon from the ribbon. And in this case, the peak stress actually decreased. Let's animate the deformation. And let's go back to the front view. And I'll zoom in a little bit. And here you can see even more how it's getting wider in the cross section as it's under tension. Similarly, if I go to my saved views, let's find our right view and zoom in. You can see once again that even though it's under tension, it is again increasing in cross section. And so that is the oxetic cell lattice that you now have in Creole Parametric 10.0.